Hello, hello, and welcome back to Your Biz, Your Rules. So I'm hitting you with something a little bit different today. If you're an avid listener, thanks for that, by the way, you will know that over the past few months, I've been doing pretty much exclusively interview episodes, which I love. I've got to talk to some really interesting and really inspiring business owners, but I also want to bring a little bit of my stuff back to the mix. So there, there will still be interviews, but I just want to... Um, weave in a few more solo episodes too. So one thing that I really have been wanting to talk about recently are the really like what I think are the big things that will most definitely boost your business results. Now the reason I'm feeling called to talk about this is because it's the beginning of April which means it's like the first week of a new 90 day plan because I've mentioned a few times I think in my um, planning episodes that I love 90 day planning. I love having that three month block where I can see what's happening, where I've got a specific focus and like I know exactly what I'm driving towards. And part of my planning process is looking back at what, what's been going on. So not just for the last quarter, but I tend to look back over the last year or so. And what I've noticed is that over the past 12 months, my business has come on in leaps and bounds. It really has. The amount of money I'm making, the kind of stuff I'm creating, it has all changed so, so, so much. And there are three big things that I really credit to that. So I'm gonna dive straight into those and share those three things that I think if you implement them yourselves, you will also see the kind of results you're after. So the first thing, is to find your person and when I say find your person I'm not talking about a Grey's Anatomy style soulmate no I'm talking about a mentor now that word is bounced around a lot and a mentor is more than just somebody that you admire from afar there are a few things that a mentor needs to have they need to have done and have proof that they have done whatever it is you want to achieve They need a certain style and voice and set of values that 100% click with yours. You need somebody who can give you the time and the attention that you need to help you like grow in whatever way you're wanting to grow. Well, that's it really. Those are the three things that make a really effective mentor. And like I said, it's more than just finding someone that you admire online. You can't just cyberstalk somebody into being your mentor. You have to really have a relationship with them and have it go both ways. Have it go in a way that really supports you as you're growing and hitting all of these milestones. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my mentor. So I would say that my mentor is Gemma, and that's Gemma Went. Now, I'm actually on her team. I'm her content manager, and I have been for about three years now. Um, but last about this time last year, actually, um, obvious, let me rewind a little bit more. So being part of her team, I see a lot of the stuff that she creates from behind the scenes. And she has these masterminds that I'd sort of, I'd looked at them and thought, ooh, they look a bit of all right. But then sort of fouls that thought away and didn't really do anything. And then this time last year, she was like, yo, do you want to join my next mastermind? <laughs> or something to that effect. And I didn't even have to think. I was like, yes, I am in. And I joined and oh my God, genuinely life-changing. I mean, we've been in there for, I would say, nine, ten months, something like that. And in that time, I've doubled my income. I've tripled my email list. I've launched this podcast, which had been something that was on my wish list for a really long time. I connected with a group of business owners that really like they fill all of my gaps they do all of the things that I'm terrible at and vice versa like we sort of are this collaborative community that really like nurtures and supports each other whenever we need it now her masterminds aren't currently open for enrollment so I'm not trying to plug those but really they are brilliant um in, actually she is um offering a 15 week boot camp at the moment which does walk you through all of those systems and all of those stages that she covers in the mastermind but in a 15 week period um so i'll pop a link in the show notes to that if you're interested and like i said i've been behind the scenes as she creates this stuff and it looks pretty amazing if i wasn't already in the mastermind i would 
be getting my ass in the boot camp, that's for sure. Okay, so that is the first thing, find your person. The second thing, and this is gonna seem like really less than exciting, is to sort out your systems. A few months ago, I decided to bring a VA onto my team, which really prompted me to look at the way I'm doing all of the different tasks in my business and systematize that that was definitely a useful exercise for me and that I just pulled out a stack of paper and brain dumped all of the things that I do day to day so that's everything from the way I deal with my emails the way I um, create blog posts or podcast episodes the way I pitch myself for stuff the way I interact on social media the way I um, deal with my clients the way I sell my like digital products so things like the content arsenal all of that stuff I just like dumped on a big sheet of paper and then pulled each one out and then wrote a long list of all of the steps that's involved in each of those things and I like I went super like meta on this and so for like writing an email I was like open combat kit start new broadcast um paste in templates write opening line that like and then the characteristics of my opening line pull out three subheaders, find three links to link to, like stuff like that. So it was like super, super detailed and over the top. So I could see absolutely everything that went into that. And like another side of that is to create templates for everything. So I created templates for everything. And by everything, I mean, obviously my images. So things like podcast artwork and blog post images and social media posts, Instagram graphics, that sort of stuff but then also all of my written stuff. So I put together templates for blog posts, for podcast show notes, for um, posts that I'm publishing on Medium, for posts that I'm publishing on Facebook, for the little descriptions that I put in my Facebook lives, for like all of that stuff, I created templates. For emails, so if I have a guest on the podcast and I follow up with an email, I've got a template for that email and when you add that into these sort of like step-by-step checklists for each task you have some really robust systems that you can easily hand over or just like blast through yourself because what I notice is that when I have to think about what I'm doing each time even if I know the system really well if I have to like actively think about what I'm doing it takes longer and there's more room for things to go sideways and I get distracted and all of that stuff whereas if I've got like a really specific list with all of the resources I need at my fingertips usually saved in Asana because I love Asana I can just get in there get it done get out and then get back to what I need to be focusing on so that's my second thing like really sort out your systems it might seem like a really laborious task to get started but once they're in place they're in place and that's it and like honestly if you want to start thinking about building a team whether you're having a VA or a tech person or a content person or a designer or a Facebook ad strategist or any of those things if you have systems in place the way you already do things it's so much easier to onboard them and they will be able to advise ways to make your process even better but if they can see what you're doing oh my god so much easier trust me on that and I've been on both sides of that so I've joined teams that have no processes and I've joined teams that have all of the processes and I know by far which one is easier to get up to speed on okay so the third thing the third thing is for you to get out of your box and this one is horrible it's excruciating it's very very unappealing I'm doing a great job of making it sound enticing right (laughs) but you know what visibility is not fun when it's not in your comfort zone but it's got it like you need to do if you want to grow or scale your business if you want to get seen by more people get hired by more people you have to put yourself out there it's as simple as and I have tried to argue against this point for the longest time because I hate being in the spotlight I am so comfortable like sat behind my computer screen working behind the scenes doing wonderful things for wonderful people without having the focus being on me so this is this is something that Gemma's actually been challenging me with in the mastermind is uh, 
she's really been pushing me out of that comfort zone and making me try all of these things that feel horrible but are having great results. So first of all, last year she challenged me to do 30 days of live streams from my Facebook page and at this point the thought of going live like literally made me want to throw up. I would like switch my webcam on and then quickly have to switch it off and I'd just chicken out straight away and be really pathetic about it. But as soon as she said that and she said it publicly in the group, so there was the accountability there, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do these 30 days of lives. And I did it and the first few were hideous and horrible and I hated it, but I saw it through. And now I can jump on a live and not feel completely ridiculous. I can jump on a live and actually say coherent things that people find useful and <laughs> that's the goal. So 30 days of lives was my first little visibility challenge. My second one was to launch this podcast and specifically run interviews. Now, I'd never really interviewed people before and the kind of people that I were interviewing were the kind of people that I'd been fangirling over for quite a long time. So it felt very like big and scary. But as soon as I did my first few, I just started to get into the groove and get really comfortable. And it just felt much more like an informal discussion with somebody who was like really interesting and had a lot to say rather than a properly structured interview with like a serious business person. So I think you'll notice if you listen back to the first few episodes, like some of my first interviews, I was like very stilted and very like, oh, not sure what to say. And then as I got more and more comfortable, you'll see that it's just a whole lot of flim flam and laughs all round. And then another thing that I've been doing recently, so is tackling Instagram stories. Now I, in the past week or so, did, um, joined Alex Beden's Instagram stories course, Gram Slam, and oh my God, amazing. So I've loved Instagram for quite a while, but I'd sort of stuck to the Instagram posts and like playing with my grid and captions and that sort of stuff. I hadn't really touched on Instagram stories, but I am obsessed, like seriously. Go over to my Instagram account right now, check out my stories, because I can guarantee there will be one there. I can't stop creating them, I'm like in love. In that course, she walks you through like so many techniques for creating these gorgeous, dynamic, creative stories that get people to click and get people to respond and engage and buy things and fall in love with your brand again and again and again. And it, like I said, I've been doing this for maybe a week, 10 days, and my Instagram following has grown massively. Like the amount of engagement I've seen has grown massively. Like somebody's bought things because I've told them to buy things simply in my Instagram stories. Like that's how impactful it is. But what I really wanted to avoid is that thing where you join a course, work through the lessons and then sort of ignore them. Well, I banded together with my friend Emma from the Freelance Lifestyle and we decided to hijack Vader, which is vlog every day in April and do our own version. So we decided Story Vader was gonna be a thing. So we put together a list of 30 prompts that we could use to guide our Instagram stories for the whole month of April. And we, like, we published them, we shared them with our networks, helped people join um, so that they too can start to get a bit more comfortable with Instagram stories. Again, this is something that I've really, really loved doing. And this, I don't know if it's because I've done all of the other visibility work before now, or if this is just my thing and it really clicks, but I'm just feeling really good about being seen a bit more and like creating this stuff that's a little bit less formal and a bit more off the cuff and just bags and bags of fun. So I'd really advise you to like look for, look for the things that yes, are outside of your comfort zone, but also like ultimately feel good. And don't let that be an excuse to scrap something the moment it doesn't feel good because for the, the first few times you do something especially if it's something new, it's gonna feel weird and it's gonna feel uncomfortable. So ride that wave, get past that, and then make the decision whether that's something you wanna keep doing or not. Okay, so the three biggest things that could really boost your business results are, number one, find your person, find your mentor. 
Number two, sort out your systems. And number three, get out of your box and start working on that visibility. Now, let me be real. None of these are quick fixes, but if you're willing to focus on learning from the right people and knocking out the kinks in your workflows and upping your visibility in a really strategic way, you will see the difference, my friend. Thank you for listening to Your Biz, Your Rules. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode as much as I enjoyed creating it. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about weaving personality into your business, please feel free to hop over to my website, darapaddy.com. That's where you'll find all kinds of resources and all kinds of inspiration for just being a little bit more you online, because it is possible.